Once again, this is yet another Lemon 64 Player Guide and Review. This one, in case you can't read it, is Cauldron. This was released by Palace Software in 1985. This Remember Crack also opens with a poem which gives away some of the ingredients that we'll need in the game and we'll need to collect ingredients in this game in order to complete it. And you can see some help as well, the controls, and a few hints and notes as well, which were not credited in the original cassette inlay cover. So, pressing fire, we go to the cheat options, and for this Unlimited Lives review, let's switch on the Unlimited Lives, and switch off the Unlimited Magic, and let's see what this game is all about. game begins with a very atmospheric introduction with our witch flying around the screen and the word cauldron in a very fancy font in the middle of it. Then you can see that this game was programmed by Richard Leinfeldner, who you may remember from our Evil Dead review, that was released in 1984, so the year before this, and I think that Spectrum owners got the game Evil Dead bundled with this because it wasn't originally released because it was so bad but Commodore 64 owners had to pay for it. You can see the date in Roman numerals giving away that this is a Roman numeral game. And you may notice that the design was by Steve Brown. Steve Brown went on to the slightly better Cauldron 2 in 1986 and Barbarian in 1987. So let's waste no more time, let's press that fire button and let's check this game out. At the beginning of the game we can see that we have emerged from a cottage and we only have a certain amount of magic that you can see is going down when I collide with those bats. But if I hit a magic spot like this then the magic will go up and it gives us full health again. By moving to a clearing and pushing up on the controller we can then take off into our witch form which can then launch that magic against the enemies and also fly around in the sky. In this game the magic does run out periodically so what you have to do is to land and usually the bats will explode on the top of the trees giving us a respite and so what we can do is slow the broomstick down, line up with the clearing and then hopefully pull down on the controller and get to that next magic just in time. And you will hear a noise when that is happening and we are invulnerable whilst we are standing in that magic spot. At the beginning of the game our witch is very vulnerable and all we can do is to avoid these enemies as much as possible and if we fire our magic towards them, which we can do with our broomstick, then that will also take away magic. So what have we found? Well we found a green key that we can only just about see and not see it. By colliding with the green key one way or the other we can collect it and because this is an unlimited lives challenge we'll be seeing how far we can get with the game with unlimited lives and a vague understanding of how to play. In this section you have to get to the energy point which is hovering just above the water and you can see we were almost there 
and if we just touch the energy point then we'll get a life back and if we go too far we'll die. So it's very difficult at the start of the game to keep that health up by visiting those magic spots and avoiding those enemies, but that's what you're supposed to do apparently in this game. So let's waste no more time, we can see that we can fire the magic towards those things if we want to lose health before we even gain it, and you can see a red door down at the bottom. There are various doors in the game, but before we go through the doors, we'll need to find the keys. We've got a green key so far, and here's another health spot. And you may notice that the inertia in this game will drag us on, and will drag the screen around as we try to turn around. That means lining up with things is very difficult, and back in the day I did master the point at which you're supposed to turn around to land on things on the spot. Unfortunately, after 20 odd years, maybe 30 years, it hasn't quite worked out that way. So, because we have limited lives, let's just ignore the magic from now on, and let's head on towards another key. There it is, it's a blue key. Um, so, let's line it up, and of course, if we touch the scenery to the pixel, it means that we'll die. And if we touch the plants, we'll die, and all these things that they're lobbing out as well. Long-time fans of the show may remember that I held a poll on the Lemon64 website, maybe even in 2014, where I held an opinion poll as to what games I should cover. One of those was Mercenary, so I got on with that straight away. One of those was Cauldron, and I've been dragging my feet because it's a very difficult game, and it's not one that I can actually get through, it's just that I know how to play it. So, I can offer some kind of a guide, but at this stage, my best advice would be to get yourself infinite lives. At the start of the game right here, it's a good idea to get the blue key and get to that blue door as quickly as possible, and you might only lose a few lives doing that. And look at that, there's a purple key down there as well. And so once you've done that, we can then hopefully land in this clearing and get to that magic spot before we run out of energy. And it's not always the case, but usually you will die in that attempt. This version of the game feels a lot harder than the ZX Spectrum version, which won all those credits, accolades back in the day. So, if you're playing the C64 version, definitely infinite magic and infinite health really helps. But, as we shall see, sometimes if you have infinite magic, you could fall onto lava and be stuck there, I'm not quite sure. So, it's just an infinite lives challenge at this point. If you can, miraculously keep the lives going until this point, you don't want to go through the green door because that's the end of the game. But now that we've got all the keys together, at least we can start the mission. And once started the mission, we'll have to go all the way back to the volcano section, you can see. And in this case, I'm choosing to go through the red door. Well, actually not, because this is the exit point to the red door section, so that will not open with the red door key. What I'm actually looking for is the blue door, and that, if you remember, is in the cemetery, or the graveyard, so let's mosey on all the way back over there, and see if we can get through the blue door. Once we reach a door, that will automatically open and automatically give us full health, or at least it should do, going through into the next section. In this case, it doesn't seem to have done that, but you can see a pot below us that is flashing. That uh, is one of the ingredients, or the magic items that we'll need if we want to complete this game. And usually completing this game involves collecting the pot first of all. And look at that, two jumps mean I'm unable to collect that magical item, which throws us down into the dungeon, which we can no longer escape from.
That cooking pot that you saw is a vital ingredient because we'll need that, just like the Dizzy Games, to pick up that first of all and then we can mix the ingredients into that a bit later on. And that will appear in our inventory and also on our heads up display once we've got the pot. And look at that, there's also a bat down there as well, that's the first of our magical ingredients. Again, just like the Dizzy Games, this time we'll need a wing of bat. So let's see if we can get over there. Well, let's see if we can collect that wing of bat on this place. Here we go, that's the wing of bat collected. That's our first magical item, and of course many of these screens lead to leaps of faith, unless you know precisely where you can jump on and jump off these things. And in this particular section you can see me heading down towards at the moment, you'll need to get all the way through four screens without dying, otherwise you'll have to go all the way back and it materialises all the way at the top of the level, which unfortunately is a dead end. So, in order to get through this screen, we'll have to go through the bottom of the level and not take damage at all at any point all the way through it. To do this, it helps to die on this very first screen and then you'll have 99% health, hopefully going on to the next one, and then avoid as much as possible all of these ghosts. And then if you can get on to the next one without dying, then you stand a chance because you'll respawn there. But I ran out of patience, so what I am actually doing is reloading this again from scratch, giving myself all the keys, and now we'll head off, assuming that we've got the cooking pot, we'll now head off towards the second door that we need to get to in this game. And that's the purple door, and so let's land at that purple door, and let's check that out. The purple section can be one of the easier levels in the game, although it's not the easiest. Let's get in there and let's see what this contains. And like the volcano, this is a mountain, and in here there's simply lots of water, and also this frog which is jumping down. This is Juice of Toad. For some reason, the controls in this game, if you don't let go of the controller, the player will jump twice, and that can ruin a very good attempt at a level, simply because the character jumps twice. And that never happened in the Turrican games, but somehow in this game, unless you're careful, that will happen. So let's try to get through onto the next section. We have yet another ingredient, and the ingredients are as follows. If you go through the red door, then you'll eventually find the Molten Lava. If you go through the blue door, you'll find the Wing of Bat that we've collected, or we should have collected by now. And if you go through the purple door, you can get the Juice of Toad, which we've collected. Also, the Eye of Newt and the Hemlock Root as well. So there's three items in here. And then the final green door, where we find the Broomstick, is where the end of game boss is. So you don't go through the green door until the end of the game. But we can only carry two items at once, and so once we've collected two items, we'll have to exit the caves, and there are more than two items in these caves. Once we've collected the cauldron, you'll also get bonus items, including chests that we can pick up. But you can see on this section, it is possible, according to the long play, to jump out of here. But if you take too much damage and you don't get those pixel perfect jumps pixel perfectly, then you will find yourself frustrated and leading to endless deaths in this game. So we should be able to climb up from here, collect the Eye of Newt and then get back to the Hemrolot route and escape this level. But maybe I could do this in the past, maybe not, but right now I'm getting extremely frustrated with this. So what we're actually going to do is to move on away from that purple door and we've got one more door to explore that's the red door and all you have to do is take the ingredients back to the cottage that we saw at the beginning of the game then the witch will mix those up in the cauldron assuming you've got the cooking pot and then extra items will appear on the level that we can collect and I'm not sure but maybe they'll give us a higher jump and a better tolerance to these enemies 
I do know that once you've cleared an area, then the enemies on the surface will disappear. And that means that the graveyard will be free of ghosts and the plant section will be free of plants lobbing things towards us. So it means that once you've cleared these caves out completely, then the above section is free of critters and that means that we shouldn't take damage and the rest of the game is easy. The hard part is surviving these underground sections and that really is a difficult part particularly because this section is timed and if you don't jump onto that platform precisely the right point that will set off in the opposite direction and you can see I think there is supposed to be a chest here if you do have the cooking pot but we don't so that doesn't appear and according to the Lemon64 review Kim Lemon reported that the items do change position randomly around the game I haven't found that I think the key ingredients are always in the same position and maybe it's the chests that move around which are the bonus items. Having collected all of the items in the game you then mix those up in the cauldron going backwards and forwards to all those screens and collecting them up and looping the levels maybe twice particularly the purple one because it has three items in there and then you can go to the green door go through collect the broomstick at the end of the game and complete it and the green level is the easiest level to get through in the game one of the more difficult seems to be this one and you have to again be pixel perfect to get through all of this and survive on to that next level. It's very difficult and virtually all the players who ever played this game said it was immensely difficult. The graphics are tremendous, the music is amazingly atmospheric, but the gameplay lets it down by being just too damn hard. Looking at the reviews of this game, the Lemon64 website gave this the lowest score at 71%. Commodore Format awarded this 75%. Your Commodore gave it 8%. Your 64 gave it 8%. Zap originally gave it 87%. CMVG awarded this 90%. Commodore Horizons awarded Cauldron 90%. Commodore User awarded this game 100% and Home Computer Weekly also awarded this game 100% which gives us the average score of 8.5 out of 10. I think this game is an infuriating mess and back in the day I could get slightly further than this by collecting a few of those ingredients and clearing away the top level which makes it easier to progress. If you can't, you won't, and as you can see by these futile attempts, sometimes the game defeats us at every opportunity, and even if you know the right way to go, unfortunately, you have to be pixel perfect to get out of this pit. So I'd probably only give this game a 3 out of 10, one each for the graphics and sound, unfortunately, you know, the playability, unfortunately, suffers as a result of playing this game. So, thank you very much for this semi-play guide and a bit of a review, and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.